And then, finally, everyone will burst into song and dance to sing the final chorus. It will be my masterpiece. I mean, it sounds like a good idea and all, Milton. I know that you're a good director. Ahem. Pardon me, a great director. And an artist. Filmmaker, baker, musician, robot mechanic, and most of all, chess master. Chess master. I knew I was forgetting something. Anyways, it sounds like a great idea, but I just don't think we'll be able to pull it together by tomorrow. Oh, nonsense, my dear. All that we need to do is pull together a few... Uh, sorry, I couldn't find anyone else. Uh, could you please direct me to the nearest tropical fish retailer? Uh, well... Yes, it's down about a block, and then you'll take a left, and then two rights, and a left, and another right, and a left, and be on your left. <laughs> okay, cool. Ah, but, my good friend, I wonder if you might tarry a moment longer and give us your opinion on something. Sure. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You see... I have a vision for a grand musical telling the big God story, complete with music and singing and dancing and lights. I'm wondering... I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you talking about? He's talking about a musical like you see on Broadway? No, or... no I get that. He said something about a huge God tale thing. You mean the big God story? Do <laughs> you mean to tell me that you've never heard of the big God story? No. It's the best, most important, most exciting story ever told. Where should we begin? Let's begin at the start. Where's the start? In the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens. He made the world and saw that it was good. Wind and seas, rocks and trees, mountains and all living things. Then God made man and woman in his image, and he named them Adam and Eve. We lived in the Garden of Eden, and we got to do cool things. Like give all the animals names, yes, even the ones with wings. Paradise is where we dwelled, we never meant to say farewell. Everything was going swell until... Until what? Adam and Eve ate fruit from a tree that God had forbidden them to eat from. After he gave them their consequences, he sent Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden for good. We shouldn't have eaten from the tree. We miss God, our friend, we used to be so free. God promised a Redeemer would come to earth one day to restore our broken friendship forever and always. Generations passed and more people disobeyed. For the world, God decided it was time for a clean slate. That's where Noah comes in. Yes, Noah. Noah loved God, and God chose to use Noah to carry out his plan. God told Noah to build a humongous boat and fill it with his family and two of every animal. Hey, I'm Noah and this is crazy. I'm gonna build a boat today. God told me to do it. I don't even know how to build a boat, and I really, 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 really hope it floats. I hope the animals love it. Let's jump ahead now. The rains came down and washed away Everything but me and my family <laughs> Oh, and of course the animals <laughs> After the flood, God made a promise and he made a rainbow A promise to never destroy the earth by flood again Oh, isn't it beautiful? God used the boat to rescue Noah, his family, and the animals But the real rescue was still to come So they waited for the promise they weren't the only ones waiting for a promise. Hundreds of years later, there lived a man named Abraham. For years we've been praying for a son. We trust that God will keep his promises, everyone. But we're old and we still want to pray. We haven't given up on God, though people think we're crazy. And, and guess what? He gave us a son. We looked at lots of baby names. 
we shout it out, we must express God keeps his promises. Yes! Abraham's son Isaac grew up and had a son named Jacob. Jacob grew up and had many sons, one of which was named Joseph. Hey, I'm Joseph and I'm looking good. I have a cool coat, but I'm misunderstood. Why don't my brothers love me? We sold him as a slave, told our dad he was dead. Now he's an agent working hard instead. We hope he will forgive us. Joseph did eventually forgive his brothers. Though I'm far from home and feeling all alone. My God has not forgotten me, this I know. Generations passed and Egypt became home to thousands of Jacob's descendants. They were known as the Israelites and they were slaves to the people of Egypt under a man named Pharaoh. Why do we have to work this hard? Our hands are sore, our backs are scarred. We cry out to our God to deliver. From the people who enslave us We're losing hope But we still trust that one day God will lead us to the promised land My name is Moses and I'm mad I want my people out of this land But Pharaoh had a different plan I told him let my people go and The first time he told me no So God sent down some terrible blame Again I shouted, let my people leave, and guess what, this time he agreed, so we escaped one night and began a very long journey to the promised land. Hey Moses, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No! After all those years spent wandering, the Israelites finally made it to the Promised Land. Their journey to the Promised Land was finally over, or so they thought. Their excitement soon faded when they saw towering giants and scary people already living in the Promised Land. Everyone was very scared, except for Joshua and Caleb. Grab your sword and take a stand Giving up is not God's plan Let's face the giants and take our land Joshua successfully led them into the promised land. God also gave them judges to help them know what was right and wrong. So they lived happily ever after? Not exactly. Here, why don't we hear it from them? We whined and complained and we stomped our feet We demanded a king, wouldn't that be sweet? First we got Saul, he wasn't very nice But then we got David and our search was complete I grew up as a simple shepherd boy with just my sheep and my harp. I made some mistakes, but still God called me a man after his own heart. What's a harp? It's kind of like an ancient electric guitar. <laughs> David was quite a guy, but our story doesn't stop there. Hundreds of years later, the Israelites were taken captive into a foreign land, and that's where Daniel comes in. The king tried to force me to worship him I responded by saying, nuh -uh. The king threw me in a place quite grim A cave that was full of lions God saved me from the lions and lionesses So I might tell the world God keeps his promises What happened next? Well, something very strange happened next God was silent for a very long time Nearly 400 years passed without a word from God to the people of God as a whole through a king, a prophet, a judge, or an angel during this time. Just silence. But even though God was quiet, he wasn't gone. His promise was still alive. It was just, well, it was just hidden. In Bethlehem special night 
shepherds and wise men followed starlight. It guided them to a manger where they saw a baby boy. Mary and Joseph stood in awe of heaven's pride and joy. God had fulfilled his promise and we'd never be the same. Heaven had come back down to earth and Jesus is his name. Messiah is here. So you're telling me that a virgin gave birth to a baby who was actually the Son of God? That would take a miracle. Exactly. Jesus' life was full of miracles. He healed the sick, he made the blind see, and he walked on water. Jesus was no ordinary boy, he was fully God and fully man. He baffled people at every turn, miracles were part of his plan. He made wine with only water, he healed a sad man's dead daughter, cured the lepers, fed the masses, left the blind see without glasses. follow God. They were called disciples and where Jesus went they trod. They did all kinds of amazing things in the name of Jesus and spread the word that it is through his power that God frees us. Jesus is amazing. 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 And he came to show God's love. And that's where we come to the cross. Jesus, God in the flesh, died on the cross to pay the price for every sin every person would ever do. It was the ultimate sacrifice. So Jesus died? Yes, but the big God story doesn't end there. Jesus rose from the grave on the third day Back from the dead, he's alive He showed his scars to many people Proving he'd come back to life Went up to heaven to be with God And told his people to wait Wait for what?
Ulysses, I have just had the most peculiar of dreams, but it may be just the sort of inspiration that I needed. <laughs> well, I was dreaming that we were putting on a musical. A musical of the big God story, of all things. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's a very good question, Ulysses. How, how would it end? Well, I suppose it wouldn't have an ending. Because the big God story continues even today, and each of us has a part to play. Boop, 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 exactly. Boop, boop. The part we have to play is telling everyone the good news about Jesus. That he saved us. That he loves us. Beep, precisely. And that all of creation is meant to bring him glory. <laughs> Ulysses, go fetch me a guitar. I've got a musical to write. Thank, thank, thank. Do do. Do 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 do